probably sitting actually. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're going to start off with the speeches, like I said. We'll, uh, we'll introduce the, uh, the individuals and, uh, you know, we'll bring up the food right afterwards. So we're going to be patient for just a few minutes. Uh, but first off, you know, just as a little bit of a, you know, a quick little toast to uh, the bride and groom for everything that they've organized. Yes. All right. Our first speaker this evening is the groom. Oh, we love. Yes. Um, just one little thing that happened to Doc. The shawls on the back of some of the seats. Speak up. Shut up. The shawls on the back of some of the seats. Feel free to take them home with you. The, Thank you, Martin. You know, the ladies. Do whatever you want. For the ladies. No, no, no. If any of the guys want to take them home, I'll take them home. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, before we get to the Elton and the Nick show, I just want to say a few thank yous. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to do it again. Oh. <laughs>
so far. I mean, it is just truly a, a, a remarkable thing for all of you who have come so far as you have to, to be at this wedding. I mean, I don't think, aside from Adam, who actually lives, uh, once lived here, yeah, there, there's actually, you know, no one who actually, as far as I know, but one person who calls Australia home. But aside from that, there is uh, everyone's traveling great distance, and uh, it's a truly remarkable event. And it truly is a testament to, you know, everyone's feelings towards Martin and Jens. You know, all of you have known Martin for some time. You know, from his days in Lincolnshire. Sure. Sure. Or the, <laughs> or the post Jane period. <laughs> And it's really through all of you and, and, and all the meetings that he's had with you guys and just you guys as friends and, and, and even him and Jane as friends, it's really made Martin who he is today. He's just, just truly a great friend of mine. We worked together for several years. And through that time, became he has, he, he has always, always been a great friend. But I will like to say a few notes about friendship with Mr. K. Oh. That's he is someone who needs to really count on. Someone at a time of need, he was there for you. Someone who, who just needs some advice on a pressing problem, he's there for you. There is a And many of you have heard this from the audience. You simply cannot tell an embarrassing detail about yourself. At all. I mean, at all. Because if you tell it to me, it will become public knowledge at some point. <laughs> a conversation or within a very short period of time. All to a fit. Yes. And it comes to me now. Because for various reasons, as many of you know, I didn't know how And I made the real big mistake of telling this to Martin one time. I don't know why. I don't know if it was a caffeine delusion or if we were in the bar, but I told it to him. And and as occasion permits or warrants, I will try to distinguish myself from my southern neighbor. Because I am a proud neighbor. But, <laughs> from the other side of the room, I will often hear, he has an American passport. Therefore, he is one of them. <laughs> and therefore, I hold my head down, walk away. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> But I will never share these details in the future. <laughs> or any other embarrassing detail. But he truly is a great friend, and he is there when you need him. His brother-in-law, Andy, oh, can vouch for this. Oh, in their youth, as I heard this weekend, Andy would feel the need to match Martin Pint for the night. <laughs> Even though his consumption skills were well below those of mine. Hey. Lucy, you might want to be talking Andy on this one. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, get a bit of a I have yet to meet someone who can really meet my consumption level. <laughs> it is not that he skulls his pints, because we all know what happens then. <laughs> but rather his measured and consistent pace. You will oftentimes see the strongest fall side in the night. <laughs> Andy and Martin, in the pub in which they financed its expansion, in the Tarmac parking lot. <laughs> in that pub, Martin would get, would invariably, basically after a few rounds, Andy would basically start saying, get me another one, get me another one. We want to go pint for pint with Martin. And at the end of the night, there were four to five clients lined up in front of Andy. <laughs> in which Martin, or his sister, would step in to help Andy off, much to his protest, that he would finish them himself. A true friend indeed. I have been told many stories about Martin through the years of Hong Kong. And as a young man, from a young man in Greece to time at the airport as he moved on from here to other civic projects across Hong Kong to his time to the bank which we shall not name. <laughs> <laughs> but I must say one particular story that stands out from his early days, and this was recounted by a good friend of his, his throne stage. <laughs> we shall not name names, though. <laughs> 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 
Yes, that matter. <laughs> Not long after Martin's arrival in Hong Kong in 1996, he was staying at the Gold Coast Hotel near the Twin Mountain, awaiting to get his apartment sorted out. As so often happens when you first arrive in Hong Kong, Martin set out with a bunch of the other people from the airport site to investigate, and I quote, the delights of downtown Hong Kong. <laughs> 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 Partway through the evening, Martin recognized that one person had a front pocket on his shirt and the other did not. The airport proceeded to tear off the offending shirt pocket and place it on the bar. The person, now minus the front pocket on his shirt, decided that pocket on a shirt, than the other members could do without the sleeves on their shirt. <laughs> and consequently proceeds to rip that off. As you can imagine, this led to general mayhem. <laughs> okay, the various parts of shirts are being ripped off forcibly as the boys staggered from bar to bar. Don't, don't get too excited. In the early hours of the morning, Harvey managed to pour himself into a taxi and get back to the town. However, somewhere, between getting out of the taxi and that hotel entrance, Martin managed to lose his ID, room key, money, and I quote, the lot. <laughs> Therefore, the site that met receptionist, the That's aforementioned the Gold Coast Hotel, at approximately 4 a.m. in the morning, was a very <laughs> well built Twilo, <laughs> wearing nothing but above the waist, apart from a shirt collar, <laughs> and two cups. <laughs> <laughs> and ever slightly tipsy, declaring himself he was a resident of the hotel, demanding entry to his room, even though he had no ID, no key, and no money. No, or anyone. I have no idea what the room number was. <laughs> it was the only thing I remember was much. Remarkably, they gave him a key and let him in. And as I quote, I can only think that because the whole story was so preposterous, it had to be true. <laughs> Welcome to Hong Kong. Exactly. <laughs> 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 not a time for you, Mrs. Stoll. No, not Mrs. Stoll. To the tangled web of, of Hong Kong, Fantastic people. Oh, for God's sake. Steady on. I forgot about those. Good set the girl at the North Bay Concert. Jane, of course, <laughs> set by her parents, set on a course to live here by her parents, who worked across various parts of Asia, and finally ending up in Hong Kong. Yay. Mark, making the conscious decision to leave Singapore. For a life of adventure abroad. Very conscious. <laughs> Their paths were eventually meet in 2004. They did. Is that correct? Yeah, we got married. We got married. Yes. All right. I remember it well. And the rest, they this say sounds about right. It was. So please be upstanding. Oh, yes. And to raise a glass. To Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. King. Yes. 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 embark on the written speech dish. Um, I, I, I did kind of, I didn't think about it, but I wanted to say a few words about, as be, being a representative of the father and the bride, and who, 
he would have loved to have been here. Mm. And he, he, would have, he, would have, he would have been he would have been so happy today. And he is, he is so happy today. Yes. He's just not here. And believe me, that happiness will be represented when they go back to Hong Kong. But but just on behalf of him, I know. And your mum. They they are they, they are so happy for you. And they Jane. love Martin and they love you. So, hi, dear. But uh, as as is my way at these uh, these poignant moments in life, I like to kind of write a poem. Oh. <laughs> as Ross and Amanda will know. Yeah. Oh, whoever, don't whoever, even go there. Whoever came to Ross and Amanda's leaving Hong Kong party, I wrote a poem. So I'm going to. <laughs> Again today. Yeah, what's with the lads from Scunthorpe? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a rugby poem. <laughs> You're lucky. <laughs> so I, I apologise if it doesn't entirely rhyme, but uh, it's a vague attempt. So, so, uh, so when, when they asked me to write a poem for today, I, I found it quite hard. But what do you say? I could mention the friendships and the emotional times. Or the fun or the booze, but none of that rhymes. And I thought about a title for a very long time. Then I realised it's obvious. Champagne and wine. Yay! <laughs> Krug, Moe and our dear friend Louis Roderer. <laughs> Cristal, Verkley Co. And of course, Wollinger. Shiraz, Savron. <laughs> And Lerwin Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> Cab Sav Nebbiolo and a nice dry Montreux. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's just some of the friends that we share. We all share. We do. <laughs> <too. laughs> but now for the reason that it's here that we flew. I know how happy Jane and Martin are to have their best friends here from so far. Those mm -hmm. friends who are here and those friends who wanted to be are all proud to say they're our friends, same as me. You're both loyal and thoughtful, quick-witted and lively. Stubborn. <laughs> and generally just lovely. Oh, no, 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 yeah. I did that, didn't I? Yeah. Generally. 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 <laughs> we all know you as friends that we wouldn't swap. He's the quiet one and she wouldn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> With Martin playing a call at that first meeting in the junk. The <laughs> one I don't remember. Yeah. Because it was so much junk. <laughs> he doesn't dance, but Jane's thinking, well, what a hunk. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, Tiger. <laughs> oh. Now, six years on, we're here with this glorious weather. Oh. For the wedding of Jane and Martin is celebrating their future together. I end my poem here, but not what I have to say, as there's one very important thing I have to say, which is not part of the So Jane and Martin, as you look back on today, many, many years from now, your strongest memories won't be of food served, or of the music played, but rather the friends that surrounded you, the love you have for each other, and the friendship and love extended to you by, by everyone here. Um, I know that I speak for everyone here today in saying that we're so happy for you. Absolutely. Uh, and so proud to be a part of your future together. Yes. So, so please, Lee, raise your glass. Raise your glass for the last time. Oh, <laughs> I'll say cheers to oh, Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, would you all say hi to Jane's parents here, please? Hello. 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 Thank you very much.
much. <laughs>